the Nash embedding theorems, named after John Forbes Nash, state that every Riemannian manifold can be isometrically embedded into some Euclidean space. Isometric means preserving the length of every path. For instance, bending without stretching or tearing a page of paper gives an isometric embedding of the page into Euclidean space because curves drawn on the page retain the same arc length however the page is bent. The first theorem is for continuously differentiable embeddings and the second for analytic embeddings or embeddings that are smooth of class CK, 3K infinity. These two theorems are very different from each other, the first one has a very simple proof and leads to some very counterintuitive conclusions, while the proof of the second one is very technical but the result is not that surprising. The C1 theorem was published in 1954, the CK theorem in 1956. The real analytic theorem was first treated by Nash in 1966. His argument was simplified considerably by Green and Jakarbowitz. In the real analytic case, the smoothing operators in the Nash inverse function argument can be replaced by Corti estimates. Nash's proof of the CK case was later extrapolated into the H principle and Nash Moser implicit function theorem. A simplified proof of the second Nash embedding theorem was obtained by Gunther, who reduced the set of nonlinear partial differential equations to an elliptic system, to which the contraction mapping theorem could be applied. Nash Kuiper theorem. Theorem. Let be a Riemannian manifold and F. MMRN a short C infinity embedding into Euclidean space Rn, where n m plus 1. Then for arbitrary epsilon greater than 0 there is an embedding F epsilon, MMRN which is in class C1. Isometric. For any two vectors V, W T X in the tangent space at X m, epsilon close to F. In particular, as follows from the Whitney embedding theorem, any n-dimensional Riemannian manifold admits an isometric C1 embedding into an arbitrarily small neighborhood in 2 meters dimensional Euclidean space. The theorem was originally proved by John Nash with the condition nm plus 2 instead of nm plus 1 and generalized by Nicolas Kuiper by a relatively easy trick. The theorem has many counterintuitive implications. For example, it follows that any closed-oriented Riemannian surface can be C1 isometrically embedded into an arbitrarily small epsilon ball in Euclidean 3 space, and there exist C1 isometric embeddings of the hyperbolic plane in R3. CK Embedding Theorem The technical statement appearing in Nash's original paper is as follows. If M is a given M-dimensional Riemannian manifold, then there exists a number N, 2 if M is a compact manifold, or N M, 2 if M is a non-compact manifold, and an injective map F, M R N such that for every point P of M, the derivative dFp is a linear map from the tangent space T P M to R N which is compatible with the given inner products on T P M and the standard dot product of Rn in the following sense. For all vectors u, v and t, p, m, this is an undetermined system of partial differential equations. In a later conversation with Robert M. Solove, Nash mentioned of a fault in the original argument in deriving the sufficing value of the dimension of the embedding space for the case of non-compact manifolds. The Nash embedding theorem is a global theorem in the sense that the whole manifold is embedded into Rn. A local embedding theorem is much simpler and can be proved using the implicit function theorem of advanced calculus in a coordinate neighborhood of the manifold. The proof of the global embedding theorem relies on Nash's far-reaching generalization of the implicit function theorem, the Nash-Moser theorem and Newton's method with post-conditioning. The basic idea of Nash's solution of the embedding problem is the use of Newton's method to prove the existence of a solution to the above system of PDEs. The standard Newton's method fails to converge when applied to the system. Nash uses smoothing operators defined by convolution to make the Newton iteration converge. This is Newton's method with post-conditioning. 
The fact that this technique furnishes a solution is in itself an existence theorem and of independent interest. There is also an older method called Kantarovich iteration that uses Newton's method directly.